Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. You know when I was first getting started in art creation I was living in a pretty small apartment and my studio was pretty much a dining room table, a cardboard box holding my art supplies, and some space behind the sofa for storing my finished creations. I mean you can hardly call it a studio. But it was where I created art and that made me happy. By the way there's no rule that says that in order to be an artist you need a big space and lots of fancy equipment. That said, there are some tools that most artists find indispensable. And for this video, I wanted to share with you my top 25 mixed media studio tools that can help almost any artist get creative projects done. And be certain to stick around until the end because I'm going to share with you a bonus studio tool that you won't want to live without. And if you're interested in building up your own collection of tools, I have added a number of links in the description of this video. Please check them out. Okay, let's get started. Well, it's pretty obvious that you're going to want to have a chair to sit in when working on art projects. Having the right chair can make a huge difference. And I'm not necessarily talking about running out and buying an expensive, ergonomically designed chair. What's most important is to find a chair that doesn't create pinch points that can put your legs to sleep or cause back pain when you sit in it for several hours. The simple reality is that you want to be able to focus on what's comfortable for you. You might find that a simple dining room chair with a pillow on it is perfect for your comfort over several hours of sitting or maybe you're better suited for a gaming chair that can adjust to meet your specific comfort needs. The bottom line is that you want a place where you can sit for a while that's not going to cause you discomfort. It's also possible that the best chair for you is already where you're sitting. Having a space where you can work on your art that doesn't get in the way of anyone else is a great thing. This doesn't mean that you can't use a dining room table or even a counter as a place to be creative, but having a zone that's yours and can stay set up while you work on a project over time can be a lot easier. Again, you don't need to rush out and buy a fancy art table or art storage system. In my current studio, I have several affordable folding tables that are easy to move around, take a fair amount of abuse and paint, and clean up with a good scrub. As a plus, if you can find a table which allows you to adjust its height, it can make a huge difference, especially depending on the type of art chair that you use. Whether I'm working on a painting or using glue to create a collage, without question I'm going to end up making a little bit of a mess. To make it easier to clean up, I love having a cutting mat that I can work on instead of working directly on my tabletop. Part of the beauty of a mat like this Fisker's cutting mat is that it's easy to move to a sink so you can give it a good scrub from time to time. And because this self-healing mat was designed to cut on, it's the perfect surface for using rotary cutters and other utility knives and it protects your table's surface. They also come in a variety of sizes to fit many different types of projects. It is absolutely one of my can't live without studio items. If you've been part of the Mixed Media Masters family for any time now, you've probably heard me talk about one of my favorite tools ever, and that is the Fiskars Rotary Cutter. The Rotary Cutter was designed to help quilters quickly and effectively cut fabric to size, but as a collage artist I can tell you that it is indispensable when cutting paper to use in my cut paper creations. The Rotary Cutter is also very useful for cutting curved lines, and because of its razor sharp blade, it is perfect for stack and whack when you need to cut a number of sheets of paper or cloth at the same time. Again, this is one of my go-to studio items. I never put much thought into craft scissors until I had a pair that I acquired randomly at some point in the past just started wearing out. I mean, I used these scissors for everything. I cut cloth and paper and even more heavy duty materials like cardboard and leather and even small stacks of paper. So when they started wearing out, I started looking for a replacement and at first I could find nothing that looked like them whatsoever as I looked for craft scissors. But then I started to broaden my search and was surprised to discover that my favorite craft scissors were actually poultry shears. That's right, they're designed to cut chicken into pieces. Now, uh, apart from being uh, tough, one of the things I like most about these scissors is that because the holes for your hand are the same size on both sides, it's super easy to put them down and pick them up literally hundreds of times when working on a project like a collage. 
They also seem to work just fine for both right-handed and left-handed users. One of the things I like best about this particular design is that they're crazy inexpensive, so you can afford to invest in having a few pairs in your studio. The ability to cut small pieces of paper to shape, slice tape into sections, or remove it from a surface are just a few benefits of having easy access to a utility knife. Utility knives can range in purpose from a single-bladed craft knife like this one here to more heavy-duty box cutters. Either way, the need to cut materials is ongoing and having a utility knife or two to reach for is a perpetual need. While the ability to cut things is a studio necessity, so is the need to bring things together. Adhesive tape like Scotch brand cellophane tape is the foundation of so many art projects, including, of course, the ability to tape things together. But adhesive tape can also be an amazing masking aid when painting on paper surfaces. In fact, I've created a whole video on the magic of magic tape masking that I'll include in the video description below. Apart from invisible or magic tape, adhesive tapes like washi tapes can also be used for decorative purposes like bordering and adding flashes of color to a project. While cellophane tape is a workhorse for paper artists, masking tape is a necessary ingredient for any artist painting on canvas. Masking tapes come in a range of different adhesive strengths and can be used in so many different ways, from holding art elements together to creating tight and foolproof masking for painting on canvas. Again, in the past, we've explored on this channel some awesome ways that masking tape can be enhanced to offer up some foolproof masking. In the past, we've also explored ways that masking tape and a utility knife can be used to create masked curved lines. I'll leave a link to those videos down below as well. Tapes and other adhesives are a necessary part of any art studio setup, but like other tools, each has different uses. One of the mainstays of any mixed media craft project is polyvinyl acetate, or what is commonly called white glue or school glue. PVA glue is a wet glue that dries translucent and is a very commonly used for gluing small pieces of paper together. And because the glue is water-based, it's fairly easy to clean up when it is still liquid. But that moisture can also affect the pieces being glued by causing water-soluble dyes and inks to run, and can also cause the paper pieces to wrinkle. Still, having a need for white glue is ongoing in most mixed media studios. Rubber cement is a great addition to the art studio because it's a very flexible adhesive that doesn't make the pieces it sticks together moist or wet at any time, at least not in the same way that water does. Now this generally means no wrinkling of paper and other parts. Rubber cement also has the advantage of easy cleanup after it has been applied to many surfaces. In many cases, spilled excess cement can be easily cleaned off an artwork simply by applying a little finger friction to the extra adhesive until it rolls into small rubber balls and can be removed. Perhaps one of the disadvantages of rubber cement is that it can lose its adhesive qualities over the years and older paper artworks with previously secured pieces might need a revisit to make the pieces stick again. Commonly referred to as super glue, CA or cyanoacrylate glue is a quick setting clear glue that brags that just a few drops can create a bond between a whole bunch of different types of materials. Now CA glue is not generally used for paper art, although there are times where it might come in handy, but generally more for permanently creating a, a connection between things like wood and metal, and for a at least a few times for me, human fingers. Some CA glues are used as a two-part glue and activator combination. And like rubber cement, CA glue isn't water-based, and that allows artists to avoid challenges where getting parts of a creation wet isn't an option. While CA glue and rubber cement can offer some permanent solutions, they also can create a bit of a mess, and having access to solvents like nail polish remover and rubber cement remover are good things to have on hand to remove spilled glue and to free uh, the human fingers from their accidental bondage. It can really make things a lot easier to clean up in the future. 
My top go-to gluing solution, especially when working on cut paper collage projects, are glue sticks. Well, the bond of most glue sticks is weaker than other types of glue. The convenience of an easy and quick way to apply an adhesive often makes up for any downside. I personally like using craft glues which are water soluble and which contain an ingredient called crestothalphaline, which adds a purple color to the glue when it's wet and dries to a clear color. This can be very handy when gluing small pieces of paper to help judge that sufficient glue has been applied to pieces. Now it's important to also point out that not all glue sticks are a simple acrylic paste, but some are designed for archival purposes using acid-free formulas or permanent formulas and can be used to glue metal, wood, stone, and leather pieces together. Another one of my go-to tools is this two foot by six inch quilting ruler, which because it's transparent, offers a lot of flexibility when getting an accurate measurement of paper, cardboard, and cloth when I'm ready to cut it. Quilting rulers come in a variety of shapes and sizes and while designed to help quilters make quilting blocks, these rulers can also be indispensable when working on mixed media art projects. When used with a rotary cutter, cutting most materials to size quickly is a breeze. Because I often work on larger format projects, having access to a long ruler that allows you to accurately measure the projects you work on is a must. Now, while the quilting ruler can help out, I recommend having a metal ruler that can also be used as a straight edge and something you don't mind cutting up against using a blade. The cork-backed ruler here offers a nice non-slip surface so that the ruler stays put when it's being used. And the metal straight edge is also great for laying down accurate pencil lines and creating a tight line to tear against if creating a rag effect. Because I am human, I too am susceptible to wanting these ultra cool art storage spaces. More pragmatically, however, I've successfully stored my art supplies in cardboard boxes in the past. In my experience, what matters most is that you have to have a place to put your supplies when you're not using them, and also a system for finding what you need quickly when working on a project. As you might imagine, searching the house looking for a roll of masking tape when all you want to do is work on your painting is going to kill your inspiration. In my studio, I've gone with a series of stacked shelves from Ikea, where I can add drawers and baskets. The bottom line is that I end up with a dedicated space where there's a place for everything and everything in its place. Now, you may have space restrictions, and in those cases, I would suggest carving out a few shelves in a closet or even a couple of stackable plastic bins that you can easily haul out and work with when you need access to your art supplies. Needing access to a wide variety of art paint is going to depend on the type of art you make. In my experience, most mixed media artists use paint in some capacity, so having at minimum a spectrum of colors to work with, having an assortment of two ounce paint bottles can meet the needs of many painting projects. And there's nothing wrong with using affordable paints. Unless you are a master painter who sells great works of art, most economy paints will give you a great range of colors to choose from and offer durability and color fastness for years to come. Paint additives serve a wide range of purposes from extending paint, thinning paint, thickening paint, texturizing paint, and adding characteristics like a gloss finish to your paint. While your projects may not need that much paint additives, at minimum, I would suggest having a bottle of liquid medium on hand. Think of liquid medium as an acrylic paint that contains no pigment and dries clear. It can be used to extend a paint color if you're running low, as a top coat for finishing a painting, or in creating tightly masked lines. Now, I've done some videos in the past about how to use liquid medium when masking paintings, and I'll put a link in the description below. It's hardly surprising to see paintbrushes on the list and we've already been talking about paint. And like paints, there is a wide spectrum of brush types, styles, and levels of quality to choose from. Like with paint, I would suggest going with brushes that match your budget and also your skill level. You can pick up good quality brushes for not a lot of money and can pull together a good collection of shapes and styles to have on hand for your projects. I shared a couple of suggestions for brushes to check out in the description below. Like paintbrushes, having a few palette knives in your collection can come in handy when working on projects that could use additional texturizing. 
Palette knives are perfect for projects that can benefit from paint being dabbed, smeared, and spread instead of simply being brushed. They come in a variety of styles and are generally made of plastic, metal, or even wood. And again, you don't need to go high budget to get what you need. Links have been posted below. Well, an easel is not required for painting, as a canvas sitting on a tabletop is sometimes the best solution. Having a space where colors can be laid down and then given time to dry can be useful. And an easel doesn't need to take up a lot of space either. For instance, a desktop easel can give you a creative space that can be moved if needed. You also have the option to create a much larger easel for your larger masterpieces. This easel here can be created with some basic tools for less than $20 in materials. In fact, I did a recent video about this build and will include it in the description below. While well, acrylic painting isn't restricted to just canvas, being able to use canvas can make framing and art presentation a lot easier. Canvas can also be reused if an original attempt doesn't turn out well, and canvas is sure to hold up better over time. Being able to buy prepared canvases also means that you can create consistent art series with relatively little effort. Now, working with canvas, especially if you wrap your own painting frames, can give you a great deal of flexibility when it comes to the size and shape of the art that you want to create. If you'd like to learn how you can wrap your own canvas, please check out a recent video I did about that process. It too is in the description below. When we use the term prepared canvas, we generally mean that the canvas isn't raw, but has been coated with a layer of gesso, which gives us something to paint on. Gesso is generally a layer of specialized white paint that is used to prepare raw canvas to accept paint without that paint soaking into the canvas. The gesso layer also tightens up the canvas it's being applied to and creates a toothy surface on the canvas that helps paint stick better and longer. Gesso is generally sold in larger buckets and can be used to process dozens of canvases for future masterpieces. While Canvas is a great choice for some art creation, it is by no means the only game in town. There are a wide variety of art papers which can be perfect for mixed media projects because they provide a great surface for painting and gluing. Art papers also come in a variety of sizes and colors and textures. Two of my favorite starting points for art projects are heavy duty watercolor paper, which offers a roughened surface that paint sticks well to and can take on a lot of wet without wrinkling, and a smoother yet still robust paper designed for more mixed media artwork. If you have the studio space and inclination, high quality art paper can also be purchased in large rolls to allow you to fully express your vision. Finally, once you've created your masterpiece, you might want to think about ways to polish it up and protect it for posterity. In a world of dirt, humidity, sunlight, and other environmental realities, unprotected artwork doesn't have a very long shelf life. Using a coat or two of varnish on finished paintings can allow for a consistent glossy or matte finish, depending upon which paints you use. When creating collage or paper-based art, having a sealing coat using a product like Mod Podge can also shine the artwork up while protecting it from fading due to UV light exposure and can also make it water resistant in times of high humidity or even potential water damage. I'll share links on some products you might want to check out below. And finally, the bonus tool that I mentioned that many mixed media artists will find invaluable is the Brayer Roller. These rollers were originally created as printing tools used to transfer paints and inks to a printing press. I find that I use mine, as they come in different sizes, to apply paint to paper, to help glue down pieces of paper, and smooth out wrinkled surfaces. In fact, out of all the go-to studio tools I own, few get as much use in each project as my Brayer roller. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below. I hope you found this list useful, and if you like what you saw, we'd love to invite you into our growing family. Please hit the subscription button below to get started. Thanks again for being here, and I'll talk to you next time.